Hey, what's going on everybody? Back at it with another video covering Windows 11 24H2. This is the Insider Program, specifically Canary Build, and I am running the latest and what they would consider the greatest OS build number 26231.5000. This is available right now if you are in the Canary channel of the Insider Program. I believe it's also available on the dev channel, so if you're interested in getting that, go ahead and check it out. And if you're not an insider, you can always download these ISOs directly. I'll provide a link to the 11forum.com uh, URL that I'm using for some of this uh, reference information. They also have the ISO available there, and then they give you a link out to UUP Dump as well if you'd rather get it from there. But again, if you're in the insider program, just check for updates. Uh, make sure you have it set to where you receive the latest updates as soon as they're available. And you should be able to upgrade your um, Insider Program PC or VM to the latest build again, 26230 or yeah, 26231. Now I'm going to start this off just by prefacing that there are a few of these features that they've noted here that I'm not seeing for whatever reason. But again, I'm showing you this screen here first just to confirm I am on 26231.5000. Um, so before we jump into what's new and what's been fixed and the known issues. One thing of note here, guys, is that in the Insider program, there are three uh, different channels. So you can be in the Canary channel, the Dev channel, and the Release channel. So in the Release channel right now, 24H2 is now there. So that tells us that that's a pretty good indicator anyway that 24H2 is ready to go to uh, manufacture. So that's probably going to be the RTM version that's in the releases. Uh, if not, then it's going to be really soon after that. So what does that mean? That means new PCs very soon are going to start shipping with 24H2 installed. That's going to be like your Dells, your you know all your OEM manufacturers, your Lenovo's, your HP, so on and so forth. So if you don't have 24H2 today, when you get a PC, if it's in the very near future, chances are you're going to have 24H2, which I think overall is a good thing if you watch my series on 24H2. Okay, the first feature we're going to talk about here that they've noted in the build 26231 is that narrator users can now use voice access to dictate hands-free. So narrators, narrator users can start using voice access in Windows 11 to dictate text with voice and hear what is dictated. In addition, you can also use voice access to give narrator commands. For example, turn on narrator, speak faster, read the selection, read the the next line, etc., etc. Uh, they give you a way or a little help here on knowing the entire list of commands supported with voice access. They tell you where to go to view all those commands. Um, and then they give you a little summary of what will work. So you can start and set up voice access, which includes downloading a speech model, read a list of voice access commands and narrator commands from the voice access help menu, change the voice access microphone state, dictating text with voice and hearing back what was dictated. So if you have a disability where it's hard for you to uh, maybe interact with a keyboard and type or maybe you don't see so well, this would be a very good feature. Another noteworthy thing here, guys, uh, besides them giving you a list, I think there's like 10 ways you can start this up or have it auto start. Uh, another great thing is that the auto restart is now enabled for voice access and new voice access command for Windows search. So think about that for a second. If, again, if you have a disability where you really rely on this uh, accessibility feature, voice access and narrator, if it crashes on you, it, it's going to leave you in a tough, tricky situation for some people. So now this will auto restart if there is a crash in that service. So that's very helpful. Um, I'm not going to go into that. If I turn on narrator, I'm going to have a whole bunch of, uh, I'm sure if you've ever used narrator, it's, again, if you need it, it's great. But for me, it's, it can be a little bit annoying. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at here, guys, uh, changes and improvements to Windows Share. So if you guys aren't familiar with Windows Share by now, it's essentially an easy way for you to share out files. So if I just right click any file and I hit share, this will launch the new Windows Share feature. So it's essentially another window that comes up and it gives you ways that you can uh, interact with that file or I should say share that file. So if you have any nearby devices like another Windows PC, um, you could tell someone, hey, turn that on. And I'll, it's almost like the equivalent of an airdrop, right? Different but similar. You could share that file easily like that. Um, my computer or this VM, I have my 
Gmail account associated with it, so it comes right up. That's pretty cool. It's built in as a default. And then you can share using other apps. Uh, they have the common ones listed here, or you could hit all apps and this will give you another list. But what's new in this one, in this build, is you now have this little copy button, which I thought was pretty cool. So if I want to share that, I can just right, or I'm sorry, I can just click the copy button and now that's on my clipboard. So I like that feature. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. I think this is more helpful than the uh, QR code that they rolled out to where you could have a QR code. I guess both of them would be cool, but I feel like I'd use the copy to the clipboard a little more than I would with the, uh, the QR option there. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are you using the Windows Share feature? If so, what do you think about the new copy feature? All right, this update uh, also made a change to the vis visuals for the rename this PC and change date and time dialogs to match the Windows 11 visuals that began rolling out in build 26217 should now be available to everyone in the Canary channel. So that's another thing to note here, guys, is that uh, sometimes they list these new features and not everyone gets them when you get this build. So they kind of roll them out. Um, it's hit or miss for some people. I think they're looking for feedback before they start rolling all of these features out to everyone. So that's just something to keep in mind there, guys. So if we look at the uh, rename this PC, I've already had this in a previous build, but you see the, the visual is obviously changed to match the theming of Windows 11. So that's cool, not a huge deal, but it is, you know, I think it's nice that it's it matches the rest of the layout. If you're going to do it, just full send, commit. <laughs> you don't want two different themes going. All right, so not new to me, but it may be new to you if you've got um, 26, 231. And again, I had it on a previous build, but worth mentioning nonetheless. Okay, let's talk about a few fixes here, guys. Um, as some insiders have noticed, we've done some work to improve how the icon labels in the context menu display for non-English languages. Now, I'm obviously using English, so I'm not going to see that. But hey, if you're using a, a different language, that's probably going to be a benefit to you. Now, here's one of the ones I wanted to talk about that I don't see. And this is an update. There's quite a few things they list for Task Manager. The first one, though, is uh, they updated the units from megahertz to mega transfers or MT mt per second mega transfers per second when it comes to memory ddr speed i don't even see a speed listed here which is kind of weird right but uh not sure if this is just me i don't think this would have anything to do with me running vmware i'm also running windows 11 on my host pc and if i look at task manager there i don't i'm on i'm not on the newest build i'm on 23h2 on my uh, home pc but we will see at least a we go to memory, yep, we will see a speed of 4,800 megahertz. So it doesn't have the new unit, the mega transfers, but at least I have a speed listed here on my 24H2. Uh, this is the newest build, again, the 26231. I don't even see speed listed here. So again, I'm not sure if this is just me or you know maybe they haven't rolled this out or maybe this is a bug, not sure. Worth mentioning nonetheless. Okay, they also fixed an issue where the safely remove hardware option for ejecting USB devices wouldn't work if the task manager was open. So that's obviously a bug. If you had task manager open, you couldn't uh, use the safely remove USB option. Uh, they did some work to ensure task manager releases process handles quickly when terminating processes. That's great. There's nothing like telling it to kill something and it just doesn't do it. Uh, they made some improvements to help with task manager reliability good. I never had a whole lot of issues with that, but I'm sure there was obviously people reporting it if they worked on it. Uh, they noted that we have improved their performance when changing the sort order. Okay, again, not a big one for me, but good. If you've changed the sort order, it seems snappy. Again, I've never really had a lot of issues with that. Made multiple improvements overall accessibility of task manager, including improving keyboard focus, tab, navigation, text scaling, names of items read out by screen readers, and more. So that's cool. And we made it a little easier to resize the task manager when trying to resize it by grabbing the top of the window. Okay, seems to work. Again, not one that I thought was a huge issue to start with, but all right. Okay, known issues. This is the same uh, as the last few builds. 
and probably will continue to be the same on 24H2. Uh, they're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're still investigating reports that some Windows Insiders in the Canary and Dev channels stuck on build 26040 or build 23620. The investigation is ongoing. However, if you are impacted by this and really want to get onto the latest build in the Canary or Dev channel today, you can download the latest ISO here. And again, I'm going to give you this link to the 11forum.com page that I'm looking at and do a clean install and opt your device back into lighting in the Canary or Dev channels. All right, the next one's pretty cool. Um, however, I don't have this feature either for some reason, so I'm going to show it to you guys what I'm talking about, and we'll just talk through it since I don't actually have it, but it's in the snipping tool. So if you guys are on this latest build, let me know if you have these features that I'm not seeing. All right, so here's the uh, new feature. Well, we're going to talk about the new feature, <laughs> which is screen record. So if we record the screen, we're going to click on it. And we're going to say new. And we'll just do a little spot here. We'll say start. We're just going to let it run for a couple. Well, let it run for a couple seconds. One, two, three. And I just hit escape to stop it. Okay, that new feature they talk about is actually the automatic saving of your screen recordings, just like the automatic saving of your screen captures. Now it's supposed to be automatic saving of your screen recordings. So there should be an option here, according to their documentation and the pictures, to uh, turn that off if you wanted to. But as you see, under screen recording, I don't have an option for that. I have an option to include the microphone input, and I have an option to include the system audio input. Their documentation shows a third option here that says automatically save. All right, well, I have one here. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I lied. Yeah, I do. Automatically save screenshots for the images. So this is on already. Uh, however, there is not an option here. So again, I'm on the latest build. I showed you that, but I'm not seeing some of these options they're mentioning. So my best guess would be that they didn't roll this out globally. It's kind of sprinkled throughout the dev and canary channels, and then maybe they're looking for feedback. All right, but anyway, if you do have that, by default, it would be under videos, and then it would be under, I don't know if it's going to be captures or screen recording, but either way, you should have a folder here, and then those would be automatically saved. And if you did want to turn it off, uh, if you do have the, the feature, that is, you would come down here. I'm sorry, let me back up a step. You would go to your snipping tool, just in case you missed that. You go to your little three buttons here for settings, click on settings. And then you scroll down to where you see screen recording, and there would be an option very similar to this one. Automatically save screenshots. This would say automatically save screen recordings, and you could turn that off or on. Still waiting on that one, Microsoft. Not sure what happened. Okay, so what else do we got here, guys? Uh, I think that's just about going to wrap it up for what they've listed. Uh, they do have just some reminders for Windows Insiders and the Canary Channel. Um, it's just disclaimers more than anything. It's not new features. I'll let you guys read through that on your own time. Again, I'm going to provide you this link. And this link also has the uh, links for the different versions of the ISOs over on UUP Dump. So they do have a 64-bit ISO, obviously, which is what everyone's mainly using. And then they have an ARM 64 ISO. Microsoft is obviously adopting ARM processor support. Uh, if you've seen anything in the news about Copilot plus PCs, those are all coming out with these Snapdragon processors, which are ARM-based processors, kind of taking a page out of Apple's book there. So you have a very efficient processor using less power, but it's still very efficient and powerful. All right, guys. So this is going to do it for the new 24H2 uh, build of 26231. Let me know if you guys are running this. And if you are, please let me know if you are seeing some of these features that I am not just wanted to cover this quickly to get the news out there and again get your feedback if you are running it uh did i just miss where to enable it or i think i'm right on my hunch that they just haven't rolled it out globally to everyone in the dev and canary channels yet but let me know what you think either way guys are you running this new build are you looking forward to any of these features are you dreading them uh either way they're coming soon guys so stick around all right i hope you all have a great week until the next video take care